This is the complex circuit problems tutorial, and I will be discussing how to find the voltage, resistance, and currents on all parts of a complex circuit. And I'll do several problems, and hopefully after watching this and doing them, you should have a good understanding of how to do complex circuit problems. So the first problem we're going to do is this one, and as you can see, we have 30 volts is our total voltage. We have a 24 ohm and a 12 ohm resistor that are in parallel, and then they're combined with a 2 ohm resistor, which is in series with the combination of this. And that's what makes it a complex circuit, because it's got both parallel and series components for the circuit. So starting out with the total resistance. So we're going to find out the total resistance, and we're going to combine these two in parallel, and then add that to this one, which is in series. So we got 24 and 12. So we're going to do that first. And so it starts out as 1 over 12 plus 1 over 24. We must have a common denominator. So we're going to change this to 2. Let me try that again. We have to change this to 2 over 24 plus 1 over 24, and that's equal to 3 over 24. And that's going to be reduced down to 1. 3 goes into 24 8 times. So this is 8 ohms for, eight ohms for this first section. Then we're going to add 8 ohms. We're going to add 8 ohms to our 2 ohm resistor. So we do 8 plus 2, and that's going to give us 10 ohms. Then, next we're going to, and once we found the total resistance, we can use that and the 30 ohms for our, or 30 volts for our total voltage, and we're going to find that our IT is equal to VT divided by RT. So that gives us 30 divided by 10, and that gives us 3 amps. So 3 amps, 3 amps for our total current. Well, Look here, guys. If notice that the R3 is bef is after the branching, so we have the coming out of the current out of the battery, we have branching right here, and then the branching comes back together because this is outside the branching. It's also equal to our total. So our I3 would also be three amps. Then we're going to find our V3. Well, our V3. Our V3 is going to uh, be equal to I3 times R3. So that would be 3 times 2. Because we have R3, I3 is equal to 3, which is what we put here. And then we have R3. R3 is equal to 2, which is where we put here. And that's going to give us a total of 6 volts. So we have 6 volts for 6 volts for our R3. And we have 30 volts for our total. Well, we use the 2 to figure out what V1 is, because it's going to be our total minus our, our V3, because this is outside the branching. Because if we go around this way, this volts times plus this volts is equal to the total. So we're going to take 30, and we're going to subtract 6 from there, and that will give us a total of 24. So we have 24 volts for our V1. And then because, because our V1 and our V2 are in parallel. So V1 and V2 are in parallel. We're going to say that they're the same voltage. 
because all resistors in parallel have the same volts. Then we have I1. I1 is going to be equal to, I1 is going to be equal to V1 divided by I, uh, V1 divided by R1. So V1 is equal to 24. So we have V1, V1 is equal to 24. And we're going to divide R1 from that, which is also 24. And that gives us 1 amp. And then finally, as we find out what our I2 is, the same type of deal. V2 is equal to 24. And we're going to divide that by 12 ohms because that's our R2. And that gives us a total of 2 amps. And to double check ourselves, we're going to find that I1, which is 1, plus I2, which is 2, is equal to I3, which is 3. And there is how we solve this problem.